Good evening. Coming up tonight on Feedback, we're going to be talking with Jason Natsky, the mayor of a small town in New York called Valachi. And the, why are we interviewing, interviewing him? Well, he's 19 years old and he's already the mayor. And we'll be talking with Jerry Altenberg, the new director of SAFE here in Clarion. That's all coming up tonight on Feedback. Good evening and welcome to Feedback. As I said tonight, we're going to be talking with Jason Natsky, the mayor of Valachia, New York. He's only 19 years old, so that ought to be a pretty interesting interview. And we'll be talking with Jerry Altenberg, the uh, new director of SAFE here in Clarion. But first, this will be the last show I see you before election night now. Election night is next Tuesday night, November 2nd, I believe is the date. And I'm here to preach to you that you need to go out and vote. Uh, there's just like no excuse for not voting. If you're a citizen of this country, that, that is your right. Um, if you're 18 years old, you can go out and vote. A lot of people I've spoken with, actually, college students especially, are not even registered to vote. Obviously, it's too late to do that for the upcoming election, but you can do that. You can still go and register, and you can vote in the next election. But in, in doing a lot of preparation work for the election uh, night next Tuesday night, which I'm going to tell you about at the very end of the show, what we have coming up for that, um, we've found a, a lot of things about one, what one vote can do. Just a couple things I remember. I think uh, one vote put Hitler into power. Uh, I, I think that's what it was. There were just so many things that one vote can do, and a lot of people say, oh, you know, I can vote, but it's not going to make a difference. Well, if there's an, a large enough population of people who think that way, it can make a difference. And especially here in Clarion County this coming election, there are so many things coming up, especially the commissioners, that's a big thing. Uh, the, the county row offices uh, in uh, Clarion Borough, there are some borough officers up for uh, re-election. So I strongly, 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 strongly suggest that you get out there and vote. I, I can't emphasize it anymore. And if you haven't registered to vote, make sure you do that. Um, either right here at the Clarion Courthouse or wherever you're from. If you know, college students are watching this, wherever you're from, you know, I'm a college student and I'm from Allegheny County. And, you know, in fact, I have it here, my absentee ballot to be mailed in that I have to do that later today. It's, it's like absolutely paramount that you get out there and vote. Like, I, I, I can only preach to you so long about this, um, but it really is important. And that's what this country is founded on, a democracy. And um, voting is extremely important. So I'll get off my soapbox for that for now. Um, but as I said, coming up uh, a little bit later in the show, we're going to be talking to Jerry Altenberg from uh, SAFE. She's the new director there. That's coming up later. But first, when we come back after the break, we're going to be talking with Jason Natsky over the phone. He is a mayor of a small town called Belashi, New York. That's coming up after this. Welcome back to Feedback this Wednesday night. I'm Mark Despotakis. As I said uh, just in the last segment about getting out and voting, my next guest I'm sure knows the importance of getting out and voting. Uh, he is the 19-year-old mayor of Valachia, New York. It's a small town in New York, and his name is Jason Natsky. And we'd like to thank Jason for joining us. And um, Jason, could you tell us about the town that you're the mayor of? Sure. sure. The, uh, the, the village of Valachia is an old uh, mill town that has transformed over the years. Uh, originally started, it, 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 it's located at the meeting of, of, of two bodies of water, the Valachia Kill and the Kinderhook Creek, which form waterfalls, which the waterfalls were used as power source, which is why we have a, a mill. This would be, became a mill town. It was ideally situated about 20 miles southeast of Albany, New York, uh, the, uh, in Columbia County. Uh, we are uh, have a, today a population of about 2,000 people. 
uh, situated within the town of Kinderhook, which has a population of about 10,000 people. The, um, so my constituency base is 2,000. Uh, today, the village is, is, has evolved from, from a mill town and, and a decline uh, as the mills left the northeastern part of the United States to a suburb of the city of Albany. And uh, that is where we stand today. Uh, we, we have two populations, that of the older uh, generation, which worked in the mills, and that of the new people who moved in, the newer generations, and, uh, and used this as a commuting hub to uh, the city of Albany. Okay, we hear a lot about uh, teenagers and uh, running for office. Well, actually, we don't hear about them running for office. We hear about their dreams and things like that. What actually prompted you uh, to run for mayor? Well, I was elected at age 18 to the Board of Trustees, uh, which would be similar to a village count to a, to a city council. The, uh, during that year, I, I, I fought with the mayor on a continual basis on, on every little simple thing that, that you would think you shouldn't have to fight about. We even had a conversation once for 25 minutes about whether you should cut the grass at two inches or three inches. Uh, this evolved into a, uh, a very controversial, uh, some very controversial meetings over the upgrading of our water system uh, that would be a $1.6 million upgrade. And uh, we had actually had a meeting uh, at one point where discussions were so heated that the uh, assistant fire chief and the, the, one of the board members got in a fight and wound up with one of the board members going through a window here in Village Hall. <laughs> At that point, I knew emotions were too strong, and uh, we, the village was headed down a wrong track, and that's when I decided to run for mayor to, to bring the village that was so divided back together. Uh, you know, it seems we always hear people complaining about their elected officials. What has been the reaction in the village there to you being the mayor? Well, yeah, you got to remember, I was already elected at age 18 to, to the Board of Trustees. Uh, the... The, since then, they, we've had I've I've had nothing but uh, you know I, I try to maintain a very positive, professional uh, administration. Okay, um, we hear you know uh, you're 19 years old. Okay, what usually 19 year olds are in college. What education have you had, and has that helped or hindered you? You know, I think we lost think the connection. Education is or do we have do we have him back? Um, we may have lost him. Um, we're going to go ahead and take a break. Uh, maybe we'll get him back a little bit later. But when we come back, we'll be talking with Jerry Altenberg, the new director of Safe. After this. I think we've resolved those technical problems, and uh, Jason is back on the phone with us, so let's just pick up with the interview here. As I was saying, most 18 and 19-year-olds are in college, and here you are already working as a mayor. What education have you had, and has that education helped or hindered you? I think education is, is of course, at this point now, I have an associate's degree from Hudson Valley Community College. I plan to uh, associate's in business administration. I plan to uh, continue my education, uh, working for a fi working towards a finance bachelor's in finance, eventually an MBA uh, at Siena College in Loudonville, New York. The um, my education has not strictly been that of, of schooling, but also life experience. Uh, I think a lot of what people do, what they know, and their wisdom comes from their experiences in life, uh, and. I've studied politics, I've studied history and government for many years, and uh, that's what created and fostered my love of, uh, of politics, and, uh, and, and more importantly, government, because being the mayor, you're not a politician as per se, more of a public servant, uh, considering the amount of hours and, and work you would put into a, to, to a job like this, it's, it is public service. 
Now besides education associated with 18 and 19 year olds, we also uh, associate some type of social life. What effect has being mayor had on your social life? My social life, is, I have maintained a continual uh, group of very important friends to me and, and continue to do so. Uh, I would never want to be friends with somebody just because they think I'm great because I'm the mayor. Mm -hmm. So how long have you been mayor and uh, what's up next for you? Of the village since April 1st. And what's next? Since then, we've, we've laid the groundwork. We've created a nonprofit uh, corporation, which, which sole duty is the act as the economic development arm of, of the uh, village government. Uh, we've worked Tell to develop a 43-acre nature trail or na uh, nature preserve, which will include over two miles of trails. Uh, and in doing so, we've built the foundation and plans. Uh, we'll be working the, na the National Guard, New York National Guard, will be using. Uh, we'll be developing the nature preserve for the village and using, the, using that as a training session for their, for their recruits and at the same time providing the, providing the village at, when, when done with a finished product at uh, minimal, minimal cost. Uh, we would simply have to require materials. Uh, the labor is being provided by the National Guard. We've also begun work on revitalizing the Main Street area and uh, reopening the old Valacia, which is now a theater, which was originally an opera house, as part of a major project in downtown. And we've, uh, we've just about finished upgrading the water project, which was so controversial for so long. Well, it seems you've accomplished so much already. Where do you have to go from here? What's up next for you in your uh, career? I, I, think it, I think it's important in, in any, anybody's life to have aspirations and goals. However, in, in a position where I am right now, what's most important is that I do an excellent job for the people of the village of Valacia. And depending on how well of a job I do and how much I enjoy doing the job, that will make the, all the difference in the world as to whether or not I continue life in public service or the private sector. Okay. All right. Really interesting. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for also suffering through our technical problems. We really appreciate it. Okay, we're going to switch gears now. Moving on, uh, joining me on the set now is uh, Jerry Altenberg. You are the new director of SAFE here in Clarion. Yes, I am. Uh, could you tell us what SAFE is? SAFE stands for Stop Abuse for Everyone, and it is a nonprofit agency that serves victims and provides emergency and counseling services to victims of domestic violence. Um, and domestic violence can be family violence, um, as well as dating violence. Okay. Now you're new to SAFE, am I correct in that? Yes, I am. How long have you been here? Uh, <laughs> three weeks oh. approximately now, so I'm very new to SAFE. Okay. Um, what does your job entail over there? I'm the executive director, so my job entails a lot. <laughs> of, um, <laughs> just a little of everything. Um, uh, from grant writing to research and to um, overseeing the direct services. So I have a wonderful staff and they're very dedicated and talented. Okay, uh, how did you find SAFE here in Clarion? Well, I'm familiar with Clarion and I've been in the domestic violence field for probably close to 14 years now. Um, and when the position, uh, and I left a, a couple other centers that I was working for and applied here to Clarion. So. Okay. Kind of home turf. <laughs> um, back to some things that SAFE does. Um, how can people maybe get in touch with your organization and what services are, can they expect maybe from you so that they know what, if they're going to call, what, what can they be looking for? Okay. Um, SAFE provides several services. They provide an educational component to the community. We have speakers from the Speaker Bureau that can come and educate you on signs and symptoms of abuse. Um, how prevent, to prevent it, um, what to do in a situation if you have an employee or um, a friend or yourself that's in a domestic violence situation. We provide emergency services in forms of legal advocacy, letting the person know what their rights are um, and helping them through the legal process, whether it's criminal or civil. Um, we help with uh, protection from abuse orders, helping um, the clients fill those out and to proceed with those. 
um, we provide a 24-hour hotline. So if someone needs to has a question, just needs to call and say, you know, it, it, we're there. Can you give us that number? Sure, it's 226-SAFE. Okay, on the screen. <laughs> um, you were saying about the legal things that you help out with. Are your people trained in this specific area? Everyone on our staff has to meet a requirement of being a coalition against the domestic violence. It's a safe, it's, it's a state agency. Um, so they have training of that. Um, they're not attorneys. What they will do is they will help their advocates them for what what options they have that provide support through the process and options. These are options and so whether a person chooses one way or the other to proceed or changes their mind, they're there to support them that process. Okay. Um, we hear about abuse, like you know, you, uh, you've said that and when I first heard this I, th I thought abuse, I'm thinking sexual abuse. I is that what you deal with? Is it sexual abuse or what kind specifically? Okay. Um, sometimes referred to as family violence. It can take the shape of physical violence, um, whether it's threatening or through intimidation. It can be through, it, we're dealing with um, economic violence where they um, can be kept from working or kept through e economic controls, um, not allowed to have money <laughs> to mm -hmm. be able to do things. It can be um, or verbally, um, and it can be sexual. Um, there is a center in Claring that handles, it passages, does handle the sexual assault component. So they handle and they help victims through, very similar to what we do with the physical violence they do with the sexual. So violence. if someone would come to you for sexual violence, would you just refer them? Yes, to, we oh. would make those referrals. Oh. We, we refer to most community agencies. Mm. So. Okay, it's kind of interesting that you say uh, about the different levels of it. Most people only would think that it's a physical thing, and right. you're saying with economic uh, control. Um, what are people maybe or overanalyzing when they're saying it's physical, um, w or is physical the most cases you hear about? I think there's a, there are many forms of abuse. Sometimes there's uh, multi levels going on at the same time. Mm -hmm. You'll see economic control. You'll see the physical. You'll see. Um, you know, some of the other forms of verbal, um, but I think you hear mostly in the media the physical, and so you tend to associate domestic violence, and it's also more life-threatening, mm -hmm. so you tend to hear a lot more about the physical abuse. Okay. Um, let's say there's somebody who's in a relationship or uh, in a family where this is happening. What are some tips for them, it, someone actually in the family? In the family, I, I think if if you could get them to call to make that step, um, that they would get their options. Every situation is a little different. I guess safety is the biggest factor that we look at. You know what they can do in their own home to to feel safer. Um, you know, have a suitcase packed um, mm. and out of friends. So if you do need the field to run, you have some things. If you have children involved, it's very difficult for people to leave when there are children involved. Um, it, w when that happens and you leave with the children, make sure you take um, uh, social security cards, birth certificates, shot records. You know, those are things that you'd want to have copies and, and at your friend's house, you know, right. just in case mm -hmm. of. Okay. Um, it kind of surprised me there. You said to get the people to actually take action. Uh, that surprised me. Are people in these uh, an abusive relationship, or do they not want to take action? I think the dynamics, um, there are many reasons why people stay in an abusive situation. The leaving process is actually takes on an average, um, they estimated one to seven times of actually going through the leaving process before they're capable mm. and have that support in place to leave. Now that's an average. <laughs> it mm -hmm. doesn't mean right. um, that it happens that way all the time. Um, there's a lot of reasons it's very difficult to leave. A lot of times children are involved. Um, I guess if you think of it, it, it in domestic violence, you have someone who knows everything about you. You know, <laughs> normally who you know, who you don't know, where you would go, where you wouldn't go. And so when you have that, it's like a personal terrorist. And when you have that person um, looking at you and knowing where you're going to go, where you're not going, and you have very limited income um, because you probably don't have control over it. You could make a lot of money, work, be professional, and not have control over it. Um, where are you going to go? 
you know because they're going to know everywhere so what we do is we help with some of those options so maybe let's talk about the people that this happens to maybe the stereotype would be a low socio economic level is that true or is it always no it's not true I think it's portrayed that way because technically when you gather the stats a lot of times they gather them from emergency rooms or from other services that will see a little bit more of the lower social economic spectrum but it because there might be some other options they can go to their private physician they can go you know if there are different income levels it happens across all income levels all religions you know all race ethnic backgrounds and it happens in heterosexual and homosexual relationships there really isn't a class that does not happen to and let's say that you're the third party in this you know that going on what can you do to the third party probably the hardest thing is to be supportive and to understand that has a domestic violence center and in Pennsylvania we have a coalition that is a resource there too and if you would call 1-800-SAFE that's a national hotline and no matter where you are or where you need to go they'll connect you to a program closest to you so there's there's information out there so if you know someone who's in a situation I guess I would say that it is your business, you know, <laughs> get mm -hmm. involved, you know, give some options. Uh, now, SAFE, is, it is a national organization? SAFE is a local nonprofit organization. Oh. Um, the National uh, Resource Center um, and the National Coalition Against Domestic Violence has a hotline number and that's 1-800-SAFE and that'll connect you it's not answered in Pennsylvania but it'll connect you to anywhere that you're looking to go across the country to the closest domestic violence center nearest you um, and in Clarion County it would be us. Okay. <laughs> so. um, funding wise are you a government agency? No we are a nonprofit we receive our funding from um, partial grants from the Pennsylvania Coalition Against Domestic Violence um, the Pennsylvania Coalition Against Crime and Delinquency, um, Public uh, Department of Public Welfare, um, and through United Way Agency. We're a United Way agency, so we receive money through them. And you take donations? Uh, yes, and we do <laughs> lots of fundraising. Uh -huh. <laughs> so. Okay. All right. And um, how can people request that help again? What was the number? One, one, um, two six six. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's all right. Two two six eight or. Uh, Safe. 226 safe. safe. Okay. <laughs> and um, one last final, you to raise money, you said that there was an auction yes, being held. A, when is that and where is that? We have an annual auction. It's in November. Um, and if you want to give us a call, I'll give you more details. <laughs> <laughs> um, I believe it's November 19th. Okay. Sounds good. Well, thanks for joining us. Uh, oh, learned you. a lot about safe. Interesting. <laughs> and the number again is 226-SAFE if uh, you need help. Thank All right. You. Thanks a lot. We'll be back right after this. All right, welcome back to Feedback. Once again, we thank Jason Natsky, the mayor of Alation, New York, for joining us, and Jerry Altenberg, the new director of SAFE, for joining us. And as I said, get out and vote next Tuesday night. And next Tuesday night, make sure you tune into TV5. Uh, you won't see Feedback on, but you will see our special election night coverage. You'll want to tune in for that. And then Feedback does return next Wednesday night when we have Dr. Reinhardt, Dr. Diane Reinhardt, Clare University president. That is next Wednesday night at 7.30. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next week on Election Night. TV5 News is next.